Before we get started this morning, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter number 18. I hate to sound like one of the modern gentlemen in our day and age who's running for office, but I want us to read a verse that has nothing to do with the lesson, but has everything to do with the lesson. Matthew chapter number 18, verse number 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Why are you reading that, Brother Gary? Last Lord's Day, our pastor and our assistant pastor both preached the second half of my lesson. And while it was going on, I was thinking, Lord, what's this all about? You're going to change my mind? You're going to put me in another gear? And he says, and he brought this to mind, let two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You still teach what I gave you. So today, Lord willing, we're going to continue looking at the biblical nevers. Last week, we started looking at biblical nevers. And we looked at nevers in the scriptures that dealt with the Lord himself. Uh, he said he'd never leave or forsake us. He would never break his, con uh, he'll never break his covenant. He never knew the religious um, performers who did not know him, who had not been born again. Depart from me, I never knew you. He never allows the righteous to be moved. And he never forgets the work of man. Then we saw never in man. And that's, uh, we, that's where, where we concluded. Man is never satisfied. His eyes are never full. Death and hell are never full. You're always going to have death and perishing. We saw a scripture that said the poor will never cease from the earth. We saw all those nevers. So today we're going to look at a couple of more that are just in general, but then we're going to look at the nevers that apply only to the children of God. There are some blessed nevers in the scriptures. Our pastors brought that out last week. But first of all, I want you to see there is something for which there is never forgiveness. Look at Mark chapter number 3. Mark chapter number 3, verses 28 through 30. Mark 3, 28 through 30. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath what? Never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Because, they said, he hath an unclean spirit. There is never forgiveness for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. There have been many books and treatises and uh, messages preached on exactly what is the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And it's funny, I've struggled with that in times past. But it tells us in verse number 30, if you call the Holy Ghost unclean, that's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. If you say God is wrong, that's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And for that, there is never forgiveness. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy Chapter number 3. Verses, uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. There is a never able to come to the truth. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Sounds like we're reading headlines, doesn't it? Sounds like we're listening to the local newscast. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. 
For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and what? Never, Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I've been guilty of something in reading this passage in times past. I think about false professors and false prophets. But notice he's talking about man in general. Folks, you cannot learn your way into salvation. You can't read the Bible and having read the Bible, become a Christian. You have to have life granted to you. Salvation is not illumination and it's not education. It's the personal revelation of God to your soul. So guess what? None of us can, by learning, come to the knowledge of the truth. But guess what? After he brings you to the knowledge of the truth, you can learn more about him. But you've got to start with the life first. Never learning, never able, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Lost man, those who do not come, or those, uh, lost man, but those who do come, do not come so by learning. I think that's very interesting that that's what they said about Jesus. How does this man know all these things and he never had learning? We read that last week, remember? It comes by the revelation of the Lord. How many times have we, we've all sat and had this discussion with one another. How many times have we read a verse we've read all of our lives and the Lord turned the light on? Guess what? I've read it before. That's not Gary learning. That's the Lord turning the light on. But in salvation, it comes by personal revelation of the Lord. You don't learn your way into the kingdom. You're birthed into the kingdom. And so from that thought, let's go in now to this part. What about believers who are birthed into the kingdom? What are the nevers associated with them? Turn to the book of John. Turn to the book of John. I made the comment last week there are a lot of these nevers in this book. And then we didn't read that many, but we're going to read a few now. John 10, verse number 28. John 10, verse number 28. These nevers apply to the church. These nevers do not apply to mankind in general. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall what? Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The believer will never die. You're never going to die. Brother Gary, what if we're not alive? What if the Lord tarries and our body expires? You do not cease to exist. We bury the body and put it away, but you'll go to be in the presence of the Lord. You will never die. You will never perish. And guess what? It doesn't say so explicit. I mean, using the word here, you'll never be plucked out of the Father's hand. You're safe and you're secure. You have that foundation. God has a hold on you. You know what? If you're in his hand, he's got a hold on you. And you'll never be plucked out of his hand. You'll never perish. You'll never be plucked. Look at John 8. John 8, verse 51. John 8, verse number 51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, and that's only the believers who have been born again, he shall what? Never, never see death. Shall never see death. You'll never perish. You'll never be plucked out of the Father's hand. You shall never see death. Notice what the uh, religious crowd says in... Uh, Verse number 52, then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. They made an application here. They made it wrong because of the physical death of the body. But guess what? Abraham's alive and well. Abraham's in the presence of the Lord. So you'll never die. You'll never be plucked out of the Father's hands, and you'll never see death. Look at John chapter number 4. John chapter number 4.
We discussed last week the natural man is never satisfied, and I made the statement Christians also never get their fill here. But I want you to notice something. Notice what Jesus says here. It's John 4, verses 13 and 14. He's talking to the Samaritan woman. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall what? Never thirst. But the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. There is no spiritual hunger that will stay as a hunger for you. Christ will fulfill all of that. What he gives you will fill the hunger. You will never, never thirst. Never thirst. Look at John 6. John 6, verses 32 through 35. John 6, 32 through 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall what? And he that believeth on me shall what? Never thirst. You're never going to do it, be without anything you need. You'll never hunger and it be unfulfilled in the kingdom of God. If you have the life of Christ, you've got everything that you need. You have him. You have him. And he's made a promise. You'll never thirst. You'll never hunger. As long as, and he says, I am the bread of life. So folks, if you think there, there's something missing, I say examine yourself and ask God to show it to you because you know what? All fulfillment is in him. All fulfillment is in him. The world goes crazy trying everything. Sometimes we Christians get our eyes off of him. We need to keep our eyes focused squarely on the Lord. Keep his sayings as he said. And you'll never thirst. Never hunger. Folks, it's not part-time never or whatever. It says never. Remember, we're looking at biblical nevers. So you'll never die. The believer will never die. He or she will never thirst and never hunger. And the verse that uh, prompted this lesson, and let's go there, Hebrews 13, 5. It's been a week. Hebrews 13, verse number 5. You'll never be forsaken. We've already looked at this once, but let's look at it again. Hebrews 13, verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, and that's the Lord, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Never die, never hunger, never thirst, never be plucked out of the Father's hand, never be forsaken. And here's something that ought to encourage us all. Look at 2 Peter chapter number 1. 2 Peter, chapter number 1, and verse number 10. 2 Peter, chapter number 1, verse number 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. We're going to stop there. He's talking about the called and the elected. This is for believers. For if you do these things, What? You shall never fall. Preservation of the saints. That sounds like a cold term to me, though. It says, if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Never going to fall. But Gary, I've, I've tripped up. I've succumbed to some temptations. Yes, but did the Lord bring you out of it? Did he grant you repentance? Are you still there? Our pastor talks about, you know, a sheep can fall in the mud, won't stay there. A sow returns to the mud because she was never changed. But you'll never fall. And let me encourage you about this. I said this in the last lesson I taught a few weeks ago. Anytime the Lord has ever used you in his kingdom, do you know what happened? Your use was perfect because God did it. 
and the Holy Ghost did it. And they never fail. They never, they have no flaws. So if you were used, well, Brother Gay, I'm, a, I'm aware of all my, as an instrument of all my shortcomings. Right. But if when God uses you, it's perfect. You shall never fall. These are pretty good nevers, don't you think? <laughs> I want us to consider a verse. Look at 1 Corinthians 13. It says, make your calling and election sure. If you do these things, you shall never fall. 1 Corinthians 13, and we know what that chapter is. That's the love chapter. And I want us to consider a phrase that we often read and use. 1 Corinthians 13. Well, let's begin with verse number 8. Charity does what? It never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And look at verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. We know that charity is love. And it says love never fails. I want you to think about that. Has the Lord's love for you ever failed? The Bible talks about we've lost our first love to him, but you know what? The love of believers never fails. We have the Bible. We have the word of God to back that up. God's love never fails. The believer's love in, in the Holy Ghost and in obedience to God never fails. Folks, do what you do for the glory of God, and guess what? It'll never fail. God never fails, and God is love. Love, charity, never fails. So the believer will never thirst, never hunger, never be forsaken, never die, never fall. And guess what? Turn to Joel chapter number 2. The people of God. Joel chapter number 2. Verses 26 and 27. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall what? Never, Never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. The world can come up with all kinds of definitions and all kinds of questions and say, well, you shouldn't be that way. You need to be more politically correct or whatever. But you know what? God's people will never be ashamed. Why? God's on the inside. He's revealed himself to us. He's birthed us into his kingdom. Never be ashamed. No matter which way the world turns, that's all right. Let them turn. We say with God, keep our eyes on him. You'll never be ashamed. You know, it's, 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 it's very popular now to be religious and spiritual. And you can choose anybody. Everybody's generic. I'm not ashamed. I believe in Christ Jesus because he's birthed me. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It says you'll never be ashamed. So you have no, no death. Never hunger or thirst. Never be forsaken. Never plucked out of the Father's hand. Never fall. And never be ashamed. And for the last thing, I want to bring out, a, bring out one thought, simply because the word never appears in the verse, but it, it ends us up on this lesson once again, keeping our eyes focused squarely on the Lord. Look at Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. I want us to consider something about the Old Testament sacrifices. Which y'all probably already know where I'm headed with this. Hebrews 10 verse number 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can what? Never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. They never, those sacrifices, the old covenant, never saved a soul. It never made those who come into perfect. But, but why? Because it was only a shadow 
of the true sacrifice that's coming. Read verses 11 and 12. Well, let's let's start with verse number 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can what? Never take away sins. But this man who, Christ Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, for how long? There's a never and there's a forever. The Old Testament never saved a soul, those ceremonies. But they did point to the salvation that was coming. And guess what? Christ Jesus can make the comers unto him perfect forever. He made sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. So through Christ... Sinners are made perfect. His sacrifice is the one that works forever. The older ones, and God ordered those. He gave us to those for an instruction. But they never made the sinner perfect. Only Christ Jesus does that. His sacrifice makes those who come to him perfect. Turn to Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Verses 33 and 34. Jeremiah 31, verses 33 and 34. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. And if I remember correctly, we read last week, he never breaks his covenant. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no, man, uh, teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Didn't we just read you can't know him or you can't get life by learning? For they shall all know me. Why? From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin. What's the term? It's not actually never, but no more is what? Never. Never. I'm going to remember, and I believe that means he bring, he'll never bring it up again. I can ask you a question. Since you've been sitting here this morning and we're having this lesson, how many of you remembered your second grade teacher? You haven't, have you? I say that, now you remember him or her. Mine was Miss Watkins. She made me eat my green beans. <laughs> but the Lord will never remember. He's never going to bring it up. So we have some blessed nevers. In the word of God. Christian, you find yourself getting down? Remember the nevers. You're not forsaken. You're never going to be thirsty. You're never going to hunger. You're never going to perish. You're never going to be forsaken. You're never going to be ashamed. Christ Jesus has done all of that for us. God has done that for you. Make your calling and election sure. If you're in the kingdom, you will never fall. That ought to give us some motivation. That ought to give us some inspiration. That ought to help us hang on a little longer until we're in his presence.